Good morning from Northeastern Ontario, Mike here. I thought this would be an appropriate time to uh, pull out a couple snowmobiles here. Well, more than a couple, my three sleds. And if you're watching this video, chances are you've either just subscribed to my channel or you've stumbled onto it. Well, this time if you're into snowmobiles, this would be a pretty good video if you're into sleds because uh, what I got behind me are snowmobiles that interest me. And they always have utilitarian style snowmobiles, some being lightweight, some have reverse, all good bush machines. And uh, I just thought I'd bring them out and show you guys what I got here because uh, I got a lot of respect and uh, like I said before, almost a fetish for utilitarian style equipment. Whether it's heavy equipment, uh, utility snowmobiles, Good utility four-wheelers, just stuff like that. But anyway, I'll show you what I got lined up here. And you guys, I'm sure, will appreciate it and like this. And they're all in good shape. In fact, they're all immaculate condition, pretty much. So, the far machine over there. Last year production. 300 Skidoo Tundra. 136-inch track on that thing, long track. That's the last year they made that Skidoo Tundra. Right here, 2009. They only made this four production years right there, this machine. And this machine here is as new. This machine has hardly no miles on it whatsoever. I don't even think this machine has 100 miles on it from the gentleman I bought it from with all documentation. And uh, kind of a barn fine garage fine but uh, i was the first one to get to it so i got lucky and i snapped it up and i didn't get it cheap so you can just forget that i didn't get it cheap so that's just the way it is so 2009 production year 300 skidoo tundra in immaculate condition i would put this machine right here almost as new no miles no scratches no scuffs no blemishes Everything in this machine is as new. I bought, I bought this them. machine from a 74-year-old gentleman last year in Mount Forest, Ontario. A retired beef farmer who bought it maybe on a whim, maybe an impulse buy, but he bought it. And he said he drove it around a little bit in the fields and he put it away and he just completely lost interest, I guess, in snowmobiling, whatever. And he put it on the internet. So this machine here is as new condition all the way around. And the only real blemishes this machine even has is from me. And that would be right here in the rear rack where I put my uh, carrier for my hatchet and stuff because I was running this around a little bit last winter, but uh, not much, just around my 85 acres here and back to the beaver pond. So right there, 2009 Skidoo Tundra 300. And uh, it's a beast and I got a real appreciation for it because it's in such good shape. It's as new underneath the hood and the side covers. And uh, this machine's never been touched. It's never had a wrench on it. And uh, it's got no wear, no tear anywhere, nothing. No scuffs on the tunnel from boots, no wear on a tunnel from boots. All stickers are in place and unblemished. And uh, it was a good find. It was a lucky find when you see stuff like this. When you see a snowmobile like this, you have to jump on it. This old stuff like this, I call this old iron, this old stuff. So many guys like the old stuff that, uh, and me too. I really like the old stock. And uh, that's what I go after, stuff that's in immaculate shape. And it has to be good. I don't care about the year, really, but it has to be clean and straight. That's what I'm interested in. So there you go. There's the first weapon right there. 09 Skidoo Tundra. It's a beauty. All right. The second snowmobile, which I also really like. Right there. Last production year. They only made that 300 Skidoo Tundra from maybe I said 2006 to 2009. Four years running. Well, here's a completely different piece of old uh, nostalgia right here. This is the last year 
Yamaha Bravo 250 long track, the last manufactured year 2011. That's the last year they made the Bravo Yamaha and they discontinued it. And I can see Yamaha discontinuing a lot more things. I can see the TW 200 going the way of the Dodo Bird. And I can honestly say, I'll bet you that VK 540 Yamaha two stroke is gonna, it's gonna disappear too. Four stroke is just becoming too popular and uh, much cleaner and I understand that. But anyway, this year, 2011 Yamaha Bravo. Quick story on this machine. Guy had a cottage in the Perry Sound District. He sold it and then he put it on the internet. And uh, he said he really had no more use for this uh, machine. And he didn't beat on it. This machine is clean, very clean. And he sold his cottage, so he put the machine up for sale. And there you've got a 2011 Yamaha Bravo LT long track. track. And, uh, and uh, it's in very good shape factory seat no rips in the seat and uh the only thing i just pinned up when i brought it out just now and i'm gonna clean that up i just pinned up this yamaha snow flap because it was curled up and it had got caught in the track there and it scuffed it up a little bit so for now i just put it up with a bungee cord that's going to change i'm going to put a brand new snow flap on that yamaha and then uh that's about it so, and I'll tell you a few things I did to the Yamaha. I bought this machine used, obviously, in good shape. And uh, you may possibly see my video on it changing the recoil on this thing. I put a new pull cord on this. Nothing's bent, nothing's broken. And then one thing about these Yamaha Bravos you gotta watch is rust. And even the, even the older Tundras, you have to watch these guys that Put them away dirty. Ride them hard and put them away wet, man. And you know what? They don't last. They rust. They rot. You'll lose the belly pan. You'll lose a tunnel on this. Well, this Bravo is clean, and I made sure before I laid the cash out. Top to bottom, belly pan-wise, the whole tunnel, everything is in good shape on this Bravo. I oil spray it under the hood, and I oil spray the inside of the tunnel above that track. That's just how I am. So I bought this Bravo. I replaced a windshield. It wasn't broken. It was just scuffed up. That was 120 bucks. And uh, I just wanted a new nice windshield to match the cosmetics and the rest of the machine. So I splurged and put a new windshield on it. And uh, this machine, when I got it home, because it's an 11, and I've had it about four years, I think, I pulled the skid out from under this like I do any machine I get. I pulled the skid completely out of this and I rebuilt it. Whether it needed new bearings on certain idler wheels, it didn't matter to me. I did them all. As soon as I pull the skid out, I do everything. New cross shaft grease. No rust in the cross shafts on your suspension. They've been all buffed and cleaned. Grease fittings, bearings, sliders. Everything's done underneath this. And all the bolts are anti-seize with copper anti-seize on them. It's all done. You won't have to look at that for a while. And uh, one thing too. That the gentleman did on this one. They, when these came out in 11 last year, this was not black. This front bumper on this machine was chrome, but he painted it black. So be it. And he put wide ski skins on it. And that's all fine. That doesn't matter. What I'm looking at is how smashed up it was. I don't want smashed up hoods. I don't want smashed up belly pans. You see so many Bravos that got smashed up and dented bumpers. And I mean, they're a good machine. These machines were designed well, engineered well, and they're as tough as nails and uh, very dependable so, machine. So uh, that there, 2011 Yamaha Bravo Long Track, and uh, they made these since the early 80s, these machines, the Yamaha Bravos, and uh, they evolved a little bit into a transporter model and they evolved into the Long Track model. So they actually made three different track lengths on these Bravos and uh, all excellent machines. They're not the most comfortable machine to ride, but you know what? They're a classic snowmobile and they're only going up in value and uh, I really like them. And uh, when you pull a cord on this Bravo and you're out in a bush generally, when you pull a cord on a Bravo, it's gonna get you home. That's one thing about the Yamaha Bravo. 
It may not be the prettiest and it might not ride the best, but you know what? It'll get you home. And finally, here's this bad boy here, right there. The Yamaha VK540, right there. This is the only snowmobile I've ever bought brand new, and I bought this machine brand new anticipating that I was going to move to northern Ontario, whether it was northwestern, northeastern Ontario. I wasn't sure, but I knew when I lived down south that I was going to move because I'd have it, had enough of southern Ontario. That was just enough for me. I had a different mindset. So I went looking for a snowmobile. I said, I'm going to need a good sled. And I walked into the Yamaha dealer, and lo and behold, they had one unsold VK in there several years ago. And not many guys buy sleds down south, let's face it, you know. And if they do, they're an avid snowmobiler. But he had one VK in the showroom for and it just happened to be black. And I thought, you know what? That is a good machine. Made in Japan still, this Yamaha. Uh, 535 twin fan-cooled 20 by 156 inch track on this thing. And, uh, it's, and it pulls. It pulls like a team of Clydesdales this thing man uh, it's got a uh, 20 inch by inch and a half Cobra track on it that's new for this generation of VK it's got an enhanced ride through the seat the seats a couple inches higher the bars are just a little bit longer to match the higher seat they've done a few things ergonomically to change this newer version of the VK and it came to North America in 2017 and uh, and that's another thing. They stopped importing these in like 212 to North America uh, because of the EPA and all that nonsense. But anyway, they didn't come back till 17 and they did a bunch of upgrades. Expansion chamber on the exhaust is a bit longer on this. It's also got a heated flat slide carb now on it too, Makuni. So all those things make it a little more EPA compliant and somehow the smoke yield two stroke meets EPA emissions. Okay. And uh, that's what they've done. They've just changed a few things on the 540 Yamaha. And uh, pure utilitarian style uh, machine this is. This is a good bush machine. You could pull out firewood. You know, it'll take you in. It'll get you home. But the downside of the VK and any of the big machines is if you get them stuck, you know, you're generally digging. You know, you're lugging your guts out if you don't have a winch or you're digging with a shovel or whatever to get these machines out of deep snow. As where the Yamaha Bravo over there and that 300, and that's why guys like the older Skidoo Tundras. There, there's a there's a big cult-like following and that follows the Yamaha Bravos and the Tundras, and I understand why. You can take them things deep in the bush, and if you're a one-man show and you're stuck in deep snow, it does not take a lot of effort to get a Skidoo Tundra or a Bravo unstuck. And you get on them, and away you go. These bad boys here, these big sows, you get this VK540 stuck, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of work to get them unstuck. But generally speaking, these machines will break a lot of trail for you in deep snow. They're excellent. They put down a, well, think about it, a 20 by, you know, 156 inch track on there you get a 20 inch wide footprint in the snow you're hooking up especially with a 1.5 lug so yeah i just thought i'd show you guys these three snowmobiles here and uh this is the kind of stuff i'm interested in if i'm going to spend my money and uh, i'm going to put money out for any kind of recreational i want something that everybody else wants and uh, if you're going to lay money out, you might as well buy something and put money out where you know if you need to get rid of it or it's appreciating, you might as well buy it. These sleds here, they're like a good stock, man. You can drive them, keep them in good shape, and you can sell them again. And you'll not only get your money a lot of times if you shop around. You'll get more than what you paid for them. You just have to uh, shop around and you know what? Oh, that's the neighbor with that uh, super obnoxious, uh, obnoxious exhaust in there, which a lot of you guys that got sleds like them things out here on the trails. Because I can hear him singing through the Crown Land a mile back. 
and I can hear that thing screaming, <laughs> screaming through the night back there. I'm like, oh my God, that thing's so loud. But anyway, I like to put my money where I'm going to get a good return or a reasonable return. So uh, I just thought I'd show you guys. I know I do some rambling, but I do like these older sleds. And uh, I just thought I'd, I just drug these things out and I cleaned them up the other day. And I'm also going to release a video. It's done right now. I put a new recoil on that Yamaha Bravo because whoever had it was into the recoil. They broke the cord on it. And uh, so I put a brand new uh, pull cord on this the other day. So everything's working and everything's up to snuff as far as I'm concerned on all these machines. And you can jump on any one of these machines. In fact, let's do a little startup while we're Fire here. Them up. We'll do this 300 first. nice about that 300 Tundra well there's lots of nice things about it one thing nice about that 300 Tundra is that ergonomic seating position where you're up and you're riding forward like a motocross bike kind of that thing steers on a dime and uh, steers very good But I will tell you, that 300 Tundra is nothing compared to the 05 and older Tundras as far as flotation on the front end. That machine will tend to plunge on you. It just doesn't have the flotation that the older Tundras have on the front end. That's just a fact. Good machine. That's about the only downfall. You can break a lot of powder with it, but it will not break trail as good as the old Tundras. That's just a fact, and that's just in the design of the chassis and uh, the way they're set up. But I'll tell you, it's one comfortable riding little machine. I really enjoy riding that. So, let's have a little look at this Bravo. Now, you want to talk about it, an, an easy starting machine, this Bravo. Choke it up. Brand new pull cord. a little bit cold. I took them around the yard a couple times 40 minutes ago. So you look at that Bravo cold. Well, fairly cold. And the Tundra and the BK both have electric start that works, but I think both the batteries are screwed. I haven't charged them. I haven't had time. So I think they both got uh, garbage batteries.
top notch. Can't say enough about a Yamaha Bravo. Anybody that knows Bush machines puts a lot of faith in the Yamaha Bravo Trapper model, long track, call it what you will, as a outstandingly engineered, lightweight, utilitarian style, get you home Bush machine. These these guys here, when they, when Yamaha engineers designed this Bravo, man, a big thumbs up to those guys because uh, they built a bulletproof snowmobile. And uh, I speak nothing but good about the Yamaha Bravos, and uh, I like them. I mean, they're they're not fast and they're really <laughs> not that comfortable. But what they are is all the things I've mentioned. When you leave and you're going deep in the bush, you know you're getting home generally speaking anything can break down but these are damn good machines and uh, i would rank them as some of the best older utilitarian long track machines going when it comes to a bush machine when you're cutting trap line or anything and uh 2011 right there yamaha bravo long track great great machines okay so let's do a little look at this vk we'll give this thing a run around and uh 2000 19 18 actually and it was a 19 model year sitting in the showroom so i probably bought this in the fall of 18 and i did nothing with it because i lived in southern ontario and this thing sat in the shed for between one and two years i did nothing with it and uh lo and behold it didn't do shit for me when i took it out because even though i had gas fuel stabilizer and everything else i stored it wrong and uh, i had to pull the carb in this thing clean it up and away we went and like i said this machine it's got a toasted battery pretty much so we'll turn it on we'll choke it 535 twin fan cool a little harder to pull than them boys but it'll go great machines i mean that yamaha bravo no longer in production but it had well over a 30 year run on yamaha bravo the vk you know what? That's a 30-year run in this machine, too, and I personally believe that it's going to be the end of an era for this machine just because it's two-stroke. Even though they brought it back to North America in 17, I think you're going to see the demise of the Yamaha VK. That's just my opinion. And the Skidoo Tundra still in production today. Not that style. That Tundra is still in production. Long, long, long running production run in the Tundra. Still in production. Just not that body style. And you can't get the 300s any, anymore. You couldn't get a 300 Tundra since 2009. And it really is too bad because somebody out there should be manufacturing an ideal sled like this. A nice combination sled between a Bravo and a Tundra. Somebody should manufacture one. For a guy like me or for there's a lot of outdoorsmen that don't want weight and they don't want speed and they want maybe a small sled they could buy their kids to start with where everybody can enjoy it somebody should get their head out of their ass and they should design a small four stroke sled like a good small utilitarian and put all the bells and whistles on it would be nice with reverse and electric start handlebar won't just put the whole thing on it but keep it small that would be very nice but uh all right we'll take this vk out for a rep this thing's a and the yamaha vk if you don't know your sleds and you're interested right there drive reverse low range so drive is high range, low range, and reverse. It's got a three range transmission in it. And right now I'm at low range. Very responsive throttle, very, very torquey in low range.
there you got it. Yamaha's 540VK. Great machine. Still an old smoky two-stroke. That's the way it is, but... I can only imagine... I've got no experience with newer sleds. I can honestly say I've only had older utilitarian sleds. I've had Scandix, Tundras, VKs, and uh, I've had the big, bulky bushwhacking machines. And I can only imagine if I actually strap myself to like a 900 Ace Renegade Turbo, Mach Z Turbo, because I've been reading about them on the arm stretching capabilities those things must have because I just feel in high range this two-stroke VK how it pulls and they're not fast machines but I can only imagine if you spooled up a four-stroke and you pinned it and uh, now they got launch assist on them too I mean boy you talk about arm stretching but anyway maybe one day I'll have one who knows you never know what'll come rolling along around here that's the video for today you guys and there you got it i'd have to say i'm pretty happy with all three of these machines you know i don't have any complaints they're all well built well engineered machines and uh if you're ever around and you find somebody that's got an old tundra or an old bravo and you ever want to try snowmobile and they're a great machine for tootling around and for your kids and very dependable okay you guys thanks for tuning in i thought i'd share that with you i just pulled these out Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.